What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, we have another Game of Thrones, a card game, second edition video for you, brought to you from 401 Games by these awesome backers who support the channel at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. If you'd like to throw a tip my way, you could do so by clicking the link in the description below. In this match, we have Tom playing Martell, House of the Red Door, with the Green Blood. On the other side, we have John playing Stark, Banner of the Kraken. I just want to start out by saying I apologize for the quality of the video. It's not uh, the best. It was really dark in the store. I tried to use some software to brighten up the picture a bit. And it kind of dropped the quality a bit. So hopefully it's watchable. Uh, but if it's not and you want to uh, tell me so, feel free to leave it in the comments below. <laughs> it's the best I could do, all right? It's the best I could do. Next time I won't try to film in a dark corner of the store. Try to avoid glare and this is what happens sometimes. Okay, so on the one side we have... Uh, Looks like a Blood Orange Grove and a Desert Scavenger. And on the Greyjoy side of things, well, I guess the Stark side of things, uh, we have a Baby Theon, a Flea Bottom, and it looks like a Moon Door. Riddle me this, Batman. And it looks like we have a Late Summer Feast into Varus Riddle. So since there is one summer, summer plot revealed, the Martell player is going to have all his Martell characters plus one for each summer plot, so they're all going to get a plus one bump right now. And so the Martell player is going first here. He's got his 10 gold. He is using... Yeah, it looks like he's got a second Blood Orange Grove out there. He got the extra gold from the Moon Door. He also has a Desert Scavenger to help him out. So we should get into play something decent here. So a reduction. Two green, two green Blood... Uh, <laughs> blood Orange Grove, sorry, knelt to get a duped Nymeria into play. And we see the Desert Scavenger go down here for some more reduction. Looks like another big dude. It's new Ariane Martel with a dupe. A duped Ariane. I was going to say, I had a feeling this was a, a Doran style deck. I put one together myself. I didn't use the House of the Red Door with the Green Blood, though, but that's another way to get some extra strength buff, which uh, is pretty cute. So we can get Ariane up to like 100 strength and bounce back like the mountain back to hand and stuff. Kind of funny. So over to Joe on the Stark player here. Looks like he has seven gold to work with. She just bounces back to your hand, right? Yep, that's all she does. Return Aria Martell to your hand to choose a character with a lower strength than hers. Return it to its owner's hand. She's strength six. So I apologize for the slow trickle of these Thrones videos from this series. I'm only doing one a week-ish. Hopefully I get to speed it up this week if I get some time. But uh, as you've probably seen on the channel, I'm kind of hooked on Gloomhaven lately. Uh, playing through a campaign of that. That board game is pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So if you want to follow along our Gloomhaven campaign, check out those videos. They are in a playlist on Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube. We see Varys making an appearance. He hasn't been around in a while. I miss that guy. Saves two gold on the Stark side. And Theon now no, no longer has a military icon. Nymeria is going to take it. As the first action pre-challenges here. Military for five. And we got a five strength military due to the green blood buff. And it's going to go unopposed. unopposed. Little Theon is going to get claimed. Cards drawn there off Late Summer Feast. And I have an Intrigue with Ariel Martel coming in for six. Varys is going to block the unopposed. Card's going to be drawn first from the Force Reaction off the plot. Tom's doing a great job here of making sure everything flows in order. Uh, 
I think that was a Winter is Coming event discarded from hand there, the one that raises claim, I believe. And Varys is going to go back to hand. Arianne's dupe's going to fall off. She's going to go back to hand. And we have an empty board on the Stark side. And no targets for the flea bottom. He has money, but no targets for it, so it's not going to be doing anything this turn. But it looks like the Stark player may have to chuck some cards for reserve. And maybe he can seed his discard pile to uh, seed flea bottom. Put some options in there. But no, it looks like he's just going to put another copy of flea bottom and a rose road in there. So it looks like we had the Martel player go with the trade routes here to get a ton of economy off the locations in play. Throw Arion back out there. On the other side is that sack plot, which I keep forgetting the name of. And Maester Caliot is in play. More, some more icon theft. So this Martel deck stealing icons, bouncing characters, definitely control heavy. John joking about putting Varus into play, but it's just going to get bounced by Arion. So he doesn't want to bother. He wants to play it. He needs to clear the board, but. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. He's back. Personally, I wouldn't play anything. I would just leave Arion on the board and then play Valor next turn while it's still early and try to kill Arion. Oh, never mind. Arion, new Arion has challenge action. You can return her to hand to choose a character. Doesn't have to be your opponent's with lower strength than hers and return to its owner's hand. So she can still get out of play if the if she smelt a valor coming, I guess, in this situation. So forget that. So we got Varus, Tris Botley, and a Wildling Bandit in play. And the Wild Bandit, Wild Bandit, bleh, Wild Bandit is going to have plus two strength since there is more gold in the gold pool on the Martel side of things. But it promptly gets killed after Arion swipes an icon and comes in on a military challenge. Intrigue. 
And now we have an entry coming in with Arion, six strength, since there is a summer plot in play. And an unopposed power coming in with Maester Caliot. <laughs> and our power challenge from Tris Botley going unopposed. And some pillage. And we get a bounce on Arion into Varus again. And Dominus to the Martels. We have March to the Wall to get rid of Triss, and a uh, close call on this dark side to try to move a character from the dead to the discard and draw a card. And that is a summer plot on the Stark side, so that is going to give the buff to the green blood. And of course the Desert Scavenger gets marched on the Martell side. Do I march as well? And I was like, I was like he's not going to march me. He's not going to march this guy. Uh, seven gold? No, I totally don't want to play Arian. Uh, <laughs> so some stark cost reduction played there. Another stark reduction card, the Winterfell Steward. Two great hauls going down. And Varus is back. And we have an Iron Mines. Can only save from kill, though. Not the bounce back to hand with Arion. And Catelyn. Corset Catelyn. Shutting down fun during challenges. Yep, exactly enough. We see our first Dornish Fiefdom in there, gaining some gold. Since the Martell player is going second, getting two. And it looks like the Winterfell Steward was forgotten there on Catelyn, so John's going to do it there to gain gold. Stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here. Hit that like button. We do have uh, some store championships coming up in uh, Rochester, New York. Late February and late March. Also, there are in March, I believe, a couple in the Toronto slash Hamilton area in Southern Ontario. Uh, so I should be going to most of those, hopefully, and uh, getting some more videos for you guys. So stay tuned to the channel. Lots of store champ coverage coming up. We're a little delayed here up in this area. Getting our store champ kits at stores is, I'm assuming, what happened. Thanks to our awesome distribution in Canada for Fantasy Flight Games products. Edric Dane. Venomous Blade put in there to kill the Winterfell Steward. And no Arion Martell this turn, though. Looks like he was debating using the Iron Mines on the Winterfell Steward, but chooses not to. I'm going to steal something. Yeah, go for it. I'm first, though. So power stolen off of Catelyn, given to Nymeria. Intrigue coming in, stealthing Caliot with Varys. Three strength. Arian. 
And gets Doran Martell on the entry claim. Not the Arion he was looking for. And we get a gold spent for Flea Bottom to bring back in little Theon. Who I thought was killed earlier. Oh, but he was moved back with close call, I'm sure. Never mind. <laughs> See it right out there beside him. I think it's a military challenge. You give Edric a military icon, but he's actually three strength right now with the plus one from Venomous Blade and the green blood. So actually that wouldn't... Couldn't even block the unopposed there. And that's the only, only military icon there. He's got two gold on his plot card there on the Martel side, so maybe he has some choice. Maybe you could do a Nightmares play on Little Theon, but he chooses not to. It goes unopposed. Maester Caliot bites the dust. Actually, Edric Dane bites the dust. Caliot stays in play just to get that Venomous Blade back to hand. That makes complete sense. Does she go back to Discord Pile after he gets removed from play, or is this still... Uh, no, she's still removed from play. Yeah, I went four and a half. Really? Uh, I think so. You just can't play any until... Oh, right, back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remove from the game. Yeah. So I think Ariel Mart Martel was removed with Tris Botley there. That's good. And is out of the game, out of play. I missed that. So that's why maybe Tom did not put in another area on Martel into play. I think that's what we see at the top of the screen there, tucked under the mat. I'm sure you guys may have caught that, but I completely missed it. But then again, Tris Botley left play, so I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Never mind. Scratch what I said. I'm not sure what's happening. You guys want to let me know in the comments below what I missed there, not why Arion's out of play like that, but maybe they were just talking about what what ifs. Maybe she's just discarded or something. But he has a dead and discard pile already, so I don't know what's going on. So looks like Varus did pop off there, leaving Nymeria alone on the board with no dupe to protect her. Riped for a march to the wall. Three power on the Stark side, and looks like eight on the Martell side. <laughs> and of course we have March on the Stark side into Song of Summer on the Martell side to give plus one to all characters. And uh, also, since it's a summer plot, they're getting another buff off the green blood. So the Martell player has been chosen to go first by the Stark player. He gets only one gold off his Dornish fiefdoms. But he does have the extra gold from his plot uh, being bumped up by the Moondor across the table. Another Dornish fiefdoms. Um, we got Marcella Baratheon. Well, there's no king character. She's going to get... Uh, Renown, I believe, and not stand or not kneel to defend, and she's just gonna jump across the board and become a ward for House Stark. And little Theon is back out there using the Great Halls for reduction. Got a Rose Road put in there as limited, and that's gonna be it. Over to the Martel player for challenges. He passes on challenges. Now the Stark player is going to do some challenges here. Got an unopposed intrigue with Hasella. And gets a copy of Quentin Martell. And yeah, Masella does have Renown. There is no king in play. 
And a power challenge with the little Theon. Okay. Unopposed. Unopposed. And we get his Viper's Eyes. And he gets rid of the card that uh, does the stacking. I forget what it's called, but. Uh, yeah. Dominance to the Martells. I was like, I should just do it after I do the entry. And I was like, uh, we'll see. Mm. We'll see that I pull. Because I was like, if I pull here and I think I'm fine. Like, right. I think he's really complicated. <laughs> Uh, it's the North remembers two costs, Stark event, loyal challenges action. Each player sacrifices a character location. Reaction after character you control is killed. Pay one gold to return the North remembers from your discard pile to your hand. That was the event that was grabbed there with the His Viper's Eyes. So we got counting coppers on the Stark side, and we have close call on the Martell side. Another summer plot going with the theme of the deck. Looks like Edric got moved from the dead to the discard there to help draw a card. Martel player going first. The choice of the Stark player. Seven gold to put Arion into play. Wait, no, my wait, no, Arion, wait, no, my Venomous Blade to kill Little Theon. At the end of the phase. So we have a Rose Road put into play on the Stark side. Tons of economy on both sides of the board here. It's crazy. I wish I had character. <laughs> And Varus is back. He's back. Another Iron Mines put into play. Two gold saved on the Stark side. Over to the Martel player for challenges. Iron Mines spent to save Little Theon. And we have an intrigue with Arion. Seven strength. I think he can use Masella just to block the unopposed. She doesn't have to kneel since there's no king character in play. If I'm remembering correctly. So no defenders. Another winter is coming out of hand there. Bounces Masella using Arion. Goes back to the owner's hand, of course. Uh, Entry challenge with Varus. No defenders. Grabs a venomous blade. Not a bad pull. And a power challenge with Little Theon going on a post. Winter's coming for that, but that happens. Mm. I can bear and then I can next turn you see on the flute bottom. You have two plots left. So do you. Yeah, that's fine. I get dominance to the starts. 
Putting him up to 10 power on the Stark side. Martel player is sitting at 8. Stark player has pulled himself back into this and actually is taking the lead now. And we have Gossip and Lies into the, the Dire Wolf plot that I forget what it's called. Grabs a copy of Summer. So on the Gossip and Lies, I believe it's the first entry challenge to initiate this round or whatever. They do not have to kneel any of the characters for the Martell side. I don't know how I haven't seen it. So it's a good way to score a juicy Doran's game. I guess I'll put him into my hand. Sure. And I'll put him into play. Three, four. So Martel player is going first, only getting a gold each off those Dornish fiefdoms. Uses the two blood orange groves for some reduction. And gets a triple duped red viper from the core set. And saves a gold. How pissed would you be? I wouldn't be happy. No, I know, but I was going to say the red lightning is Using the for entry? Should have played a higher entry plot. Scrub. It's either one or zero, so. <laughs> okay, so I get three. Four, five, six, seven. So we see the Winterfell Steward making an appearance back after getting bounced back to hand with Summer. And we have Sea Bitch put into play. And an ocean road for a limited. Six and six gold saved on the Cirque side. One gold saved on the Martell side, it looks like. So we got a seven strength entry coming in with the Red Viper. Doesn't kneel to attack. Off of the plot. Like John didn't realize that Tom had done an intrigue of seven, and he's just kind of chilling there waiting. I love when that happens. Let people just sit there. It's like, what are, you what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, so it's, there's no yeah, summer plot, right? No, there's only seven. <coughs> so Varys is going to come into block to stop the winning by five or whatever is needed for Doran's game, and the Viper's reaction grabs a ward from hand on the intrigue claim. And a power challenge with the Red Viper for seven. Winterfell Stewart's going to block the unopposed. And that's going to get Red Viper's trigger and claim a power. <laughs> and unopposed power coming back with Little Fionn on the other side, taking two power. And unopposed military taking one of the dupes off the Red Viper. Getting unopposed power, putting the Stark player at 12, only three away from winning. Martel player sitting at 9. And Dominance actually 2 away from winning on the Stark side after taking Dominance there. Yeah, I 
And we got Valor played on the Stark side. And what is that? Summer Harvest? Oh, it's a draw one. 6 1 1. Time of plenty. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. We have a Lordsport Shipwright. So a Dornish Fiefdoms gets knelt down, but the other one triggers off first. Uh, one, you don't want to do a Blood Orange Probe instead? <coughs> And Tris Blotley back in play. And Winterfell Stewart looks like a Stark player has emptied his hand on the board here. And we have Tris Blotley trigger going on here. John's going to just uh, look for the giant discard pile of the Martell player there to see what's in there. Wants to move anything from play, so that Tom's gonna have trouble playing it. And he takes away a venomous blade. Oh, I see. Tris Botley. Yeah, I'm sure you guys already left comments, but Tris Botley just removes it from play. It doesn't come back. It's just removed from play, and then the opponent can't play it while Tris is in play, I believe. So that's why that copy Arion Martel was sitting out there. So we got a Green Blood Trader coming in. Looking at the top two cards. And I believe that's a great haul that he grabbed there on the green blood, put it right into play. I've got Sugar North Rumbers once. <laughs> I forgot too. It's okay, I forgot about one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Arian Martel back in play. So let's just check Tris Botley here. Action, choose a card in an opponent's discard pile and remove it from the game until Tris Botley leaves play. That player care. Cannot marshal or play any copy of that card. Limit once per round. Okay, so he left earlier. The other Arion is now okay to be played, even if Triss comes back. And now the Venomous Blades left play, so it can't be played again until this copy of Triss Botley leaves play. So a star player deciding what he wants to do here, I believe. He has zero claim, three gold left. The other side, we have at least three gold on the Martell side. Only power icons on the Stark side. Not much he can do here. He knelt that Lord Sport ship right in the marshalling phase. But, I mean, he only needs two power to win. So he might as well push a power challenge. Try to, at least. Looks like he's trying to bait Arion to block. Can't go unopposed. Arion is going to block. If it went unopposed, it would be over. So Arion's going to draw a card for Insight. Lee bottom. Oh, never mind. He has zero claim. He wouldn't be able to steal power. Forget what I said. So we got a military coming in with Theon. That most likely will be unopposed. But there is lots of gold on the Martell side. Maybe has some tricks here. Um, 
Could bounce Arion to bounce Theon. And then hit it with an Intrigue with the Green Blood Trader and steal Theon out of hand, throw it in the discard. But I mean, that just makes him a good flea bottom target again. No defenders. No claim, of course. So the Stark player, John, is one power away from winning. Tris Bolly's going to go back to hand with the Arion bounce. Intrigue of one. And Tris is going to go to the discard pile off the Intrigue claim. And he is not a flea bottom target, so good play on Tom's part there. And Theon goes to the bottom of the deck. All right, so I think they're wrapping around to their plots now. That was the last plot. Uh, so Valor and Time of Plenty are stuck there. And they have full hand of plots here. Let's see what they choose. Counting Coppers, of course, on the Stark side, trying to fill his hand up here. And Trade Routes, looking to flood the board on the Martell side, most likely, with the 600 locations that are out in play. I think they counted 16 there. <laughs> Tom just scooping his gold like Scrooge McDuck here and just splashing it on the board. So 16 gold just off to Trade Route's effect. He hasn't even counted gold, which he gets the extra one off the moon. He's got two Dornish Fiefdoms, a Great Hall, two Blood Orange Groves. Uh, so yeah, the Martell player can pretty much play whatever he wants. But then again, the Stark player has a lot of Econ on his side too, but only a two gold plot not helping him out there. And Summer's back in play. John's going to decide what he wants to put back in the hand here with the Summer effect. So Stark player's going first. Doesn't have any Theon at his disposal this time. Try to get that unopposed and get the last power. It gets a Winterfell Steward back to hand. He's got very low strength characters, all with monocons right now. It's going to be tough for him to push anything through, but if he can get just anything through on a pose or win a power challenge, he's, he's got this. But uh, the Martell player still has a mountain of money that he's going to marshal with, so I'm sure he'll put some stuff in front. So we have the two Winterfell Stewards now. You're really scared of this low force. You have on all my money. You have literally 1,600 gold. I want all my money. Oh, we got Corset Sansa Stark in there. We got a power after standing. And looks like one of the Winterfell Stewards is going to be used to reduce there. And three gold saved on the Stark side. Let's see what the Martell player has got in store. He's at 10 power and he's five to win on the Martell side. Only one to win on the Stark side. Can he get enough here before... Goes to the next round. That's good. <coughs> so, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, first, eight. First start, yeah, can I see it? Who are you? Effectively, 25 economy is what the Martell players counted there with all those reducers and, and all that jazz. I'm, I'm playing fine. It's just... One, two, three, four, five, the first, like, power. How can you The first three turns, he bounced Varus. So, it's just... So I think he just uses two Blood Orange Groves, forgot his Great Hall on Arion, and maybe took too much money there. And now he's got a Desert Scavenger in play. Doran Martell. So I don't think the Stark player is going to get a power challenge through now at all. Definitely not an Intrigue challenge. Uh, and Amir is going to steal the military most likely to cancel that one out too, so... Full control is, <laughs> this is the Martell's dream setup here. Doran, Arion, Imeria. 
and even has Rikasso with some gold on him. So he effectively has, I think, two plots in the use pile now with Rikasso's ability turned on. Uh, I have an action. Okay. Played, uh, and Seabitch is going to steal green blood. We're just going to take away a strength buff. And then North remembers for two gold to get rid of it. Um, I have an action. I'm gonna take. So Summer's military icon stolen there to try to prevent that unopposed military from coming through. So an intrigue with the Lord support ship right for one. So the unopposed is going to be blocked with the uh, green blood trader. I feel like you just went. Yeah, Wendy doesn't have Renee out. Well, he's got Dorn's game in his hand, probably. <laughs> you hear the Stark player mentioning he knows Dorn's game is probably hiding in hand, but an intrigue challenge coming in could change that. But I think he has a couple in there at this point. Oh, uh, I think I've seen two already. You're crazy, man. And there's one. Two of those in your hand. <laughs> oh, I totally should have done that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he has a winter is coming uh, in the Stark player's hand that he should have done there and he forgot to do, he said. But I think that might have been alright. I'm trying to think if there's a way to stand Sansa. Yeah, the standing phase. <laughs> I saw her so fucking late. <clears throat> I removed my John Snows for Ramses. Wouldn't well, see either, so that was a Did you remove the John Snows and not put Ramses in? <laughs> they put the Ramses in. Okay. I'm just surprised I haven't seen Arya or Bran. Mm. Yeah, Alright, so over to the Martell player for challenges. Let's see if he can uh, get that five power he needs to close this out here. I think I'm better off hoping you don't have another Dorns game and I can block the unopposed power. And I still lose. His area is Intrigue, five, six, seven. So seven strength intrigue with Arion. Unopposed. Dorns game goes off. He did have another one. So that gets him three power. Intrigue claim, claim grabs a sea bitch. Insight draw off Arion. Arion bounces back, gets rid of the Winterfell steward. And that's going to be an unopposed power, most likely, to close this out with Doran. And that is it. That was quite the interesting game. Good job on both players' parts there. Well played. Obviously, some mistakes, some forgotten cards, but. Still definitely a fun one to watch. So more Game of Thrones coming up. And like I said, check out our Gloomhaven coverage. If you guys are interested in that game, check it out. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next video.